You're listening to The Locker Room with Billy Schwein on 97.3 ESPN and the 97.3 ESPN free mobile app. All right, we're back broadcasting live at the Toms River Auto Group studio right here. Billy Schwein, former Kansas City Chief wide receiver. Dave Clemick is with me in uh, Eagles 425 on Sunday. Kickoff, you can hear Merrill Reese and Mike Quick right here on 97.3 ESPN. We, we ca- ca- carry the uh, Eagles. Uh, let's go to the uh, the uh, Tom's River Auto Group Sports Hotline and welcome in legendary broadcaster for the Philadelphia Eagles, Merle Reese. Good morning, Merle. Hi, Billy. How are you, Merle? I- I'm doing well, and I am. We we all in the studio right here are so excited first to have you on, and number two for the Eagles season to start. But I wanted to add, my first question to you is. How how do you get really worked up like butterflies? His first game of the season, like the players do, it, it never gets old. I mean, it's like your forty sixth year in the booth. But what's it like for you preparing for this for the, for the opening weekend? Well, actually, it's my forty seventh. Forty seventh, and I can't and, count. And I'm a history major. <laughs> but preparing preparing for the opening game of the season is a relief because if when you're talking about preparing, you get to the first preseason game when you've got to memorize one hundred and eighty numbers. That's a little different than, than looking down and seeing that the Patriots have two running backs, number 38, Ramondre Stevenson, and number 15, Zeke Elliott. You know, I, or, or wide receivers I'm used to during the preseason. It's, it's not unusual for the team to be carrying 12 or 13 wide receivers. So it's uh, here they have three tight ends. So it's uh, then they have maybe eight tight ends. So in, in terms of preparation, this is a lot easier. Now, in terms of butterflies, I feel them from the first game of the preseason right through the Super Bowl, the way I always have. I always feel it on game day until my producer, Joe McPeak, cues me and I come on with the game, and then it all disappears, and I feel as if I'm floating. And then, of course, you also have your uh, spotter, a good friend of mine, Billy Warndell. We've had Billy on several times. He's been with you for some years now. Oh, he's been with me forever. He really <laughs> has. And uh, uh, d- Despite Billy, we're able to get through the board. <laughs> I'm surprised you keep, you, you keep him quiet because I know he's not allowed to make any noise or show any emotion. Oh, my God. <laughs> we try to keep him quiet. I didn't say we do keep him quiet. Hey, Merle, how much – I mean, you, you've you seen a lot of football. You've been around a lot of great Eagles teams. But talk about this team in particular. The expectations are so high. But with Jalen Hurts, you know, second in the runner-up to MVP, you your expectations are high for this team as well, right? Uh, of course they are. But if if you say to me, is this team going to the Super Bowl? I would say, wait and see, cautious optimism. I mean, the odds of any team going to the Super Bowl or winning the Super Bowl are great because this is a war of attrition. So many things can happen. I mean, look at the game the other night. If you talked about the game the other night between Detroit and Kansas City and, and tried to analyze it a week earlier, it would have been totally different because you didn't know a week before the game that they weren't going to have Travis Kelsey. Now, I'm not saying that the Lions wouldn't have won, taking nothing away from them, but that's a major, major factor. If you could tell me who's going to line up for the Eagles on December 10th in Dallas and who's going to line up for the Cowboys against the Eagles, we'd have a much better chance of of analyzing that game properly. But you can't go into a season and have any idea of what's going to happen. And it has nothing to do with uh, being prepared or, or medical science, it has to do with being fortunate. Because you can, I remember going to an Eagles, they called it flight night, where the players would just work out and they opened up the uh, the link and the crowd came. And about five feet away, the linebackers were doing a little dance. I mean, they were just <laughs> crossing foot over foot after foot. And all of a sudden, you might remember the middle linebacker was Stuart Bradley. Yeah. All of a sudden, he collapsed, went to the ground, and had torn his ACL. And uh, he, he left the Eagles after that, never had that much of a career. So you just never know. Merrill, this is David Klemek. I, uh, I I played for Coach Vermeil when he was a coach in Kansas City. And uh, and I've, I've golfed with you a couple of times in some of his um, his tournaments for the Boy Scouts up there in um, Downingtown. And uh, I, I would tell you, you I got a funny story. You're talking about my favorite you're talking about my favorite coach of all time. Yeah, <laughs> of course. So he's like a father to me. And uh, I, I remember how much juice and energy he would bring <laughs> at 70 years old when he was coach from the Chiefs. I can't, maybe 66, but how 
insane how how crazy was he in his 30s right <laughs> he was uh, he was even more but the, the dick for meal you knew he was he was probably the same in his 30s as he was as he is today uh, maybe a little sense. more so because don't forget in those days they used to bring 120 guys to training camp and they would have two a days and they would hit I mean, they they would hit in the morning and come back in the afternoon, and it's like 95 degrees, and they would hit again. Uh, I just went through a training camp where nobody nobody hit ever. <laughs> I mean, once once in a while somebody shoved somebody, and it was a big deal. Uh, a fight would break out, but uh, there's the, the practices aren't live anymore. And you know, at, at first I said this is crazy because you know you're going into a game this Sunday where none of the Eagles have played in a game yeah. since February the fourth. And you say, is that crazy? Well, maybe not, because last year going into the Super Bowl, they had 22 healthy starters. So, uh, again, the roster sizes are smaller going into camp. They are 90, not 120. That's number one. And number two, the fact of the matter is we know all about the, the ill effects of the constant pounding and the, and the, the concussions. We know all about CTE. And, and what a horrible thing it is and how many people's lives have been affected by it. So I honestly think that even if September, many of these September games look like the preseason games of days gone by, uh, it's better to do it this way than to take chances. Agree we're, with that progress, yeah. We're, to, we're talking with legendary Eagles broadcaster Merrill Reese. Of course, you can catch all the Eagles action right here on 97.3 ESPN. Mike and Merrill with the call. Mike, uh, I mean, Merrill, I, Mike Quick is your is your partner. Uh, I remember the first time that Mike Quick r- realized that I had an identical twin brother, Bobby. <laughs> he, uh, he saw my brother at a car dealership, and then he went onto a plane, and I was working at U.S. Airways standing in the jetway. And when he came down the jetway and saw me, you should have seen his face. It was pr- it was priceless. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's amazing. But you've worked with some great guys. Stan Walters, you worked with him. Name some of the people that you've worked with over the years. Well, I, I could I could name them all. Uh, Jim Barniak. Well, well, actually, I took over with two games to go in the uh, '77 season when Charlie Swift died, and uh, they told me to go grab a color analyst, somebody who can work with me for the rest of the season. And I grabbed Herb Adderley, the former Hall <laughs> of Fame Green Bay Packer, who lived in the Philadelphia area. So Herb did those two games. Then it was Jim Barniak, the the Jim columnist. Barniak, yeah. For several years, he used to do prison. Uh, you know, Jim. You know, Jim yeah. Barniak's scrapbook on prison. And, and after Jim Barniak came Bill Berge for a couple of seasons. Then came Stan Walters for 14 years. Yeah. And Stan and I, are, Stan lives in Atlanta, and we are still close friends, and we talk every week. And then, of course, my my friend Mike, who is just wonderful, and uh, Stan was great too. Both of them terrific. Uh, and Mike is in, in his 26th season wow. of doing the color. Well, so that's a, that's a long time. Those are, those are the color analysts. Well, you guys have a great chemistry. Uh, we, I mean, you well, guys are, because, Carl, you can start out because we're friends. You know, that, that means something. We golf together in the off season. We go to each other's family celebrations. We're, we truly are friends, and that's not always the case with broadcast groups. Well, it comes across on the radio, and I got to tell you, we, we we're blessed to have you, Merrill. I know you got to get going because you got a, a plane to catch. Uh, listen, we just want to say good luck to you this season. Good luck to the birds, and uh, Merrill, thank you so much for taking time to spend with us here on the locker with. Uh, and uh, Merrill, Minnesota. one I did want to follow by saying we I sure. run a flag football league down here in South Jersey, and. On the championship game, we have a Merrill Reese impersonator <laughs> come down and do our games. It's the greatest thing. I, you you got to see it. I, I did it. I started as a tradition like five years ago, and it's just hilarious. He even uses the sponsors that you use. <laughs> it's hilarious. Well, I don't know how hilarious it will be when I request to be paid for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> you know what they say: imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Absolutely. So, so let him say the backs are in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loves it. He's so good. You guys, you, you guys, do you guys know the story? And I do have a second to tell you this. Right. This is many years ago. Many years ago, I came into WIP, and Angelo Cataldi was on the, on the air, and he was having a. Merrill Reese sounded like contest, and he asked the, asked the audience 
to, to call up and, and they would give a prize to the guy who, who does the closest impersonation of me. So I walked into the newsroom and I picked up the phone and called the studio and said I was Joe from Upper Darby. I finished third. <laughs> Oh, that's great. That's stuff. great. Oh, Merle. I just did, I just did a regular play with no uh, nothing added to it. I just did a regular play. Even third. <laughs> third. <laughs> well, you come in first with us, Merle. Uh, tell Billy Werndell we said hi, and uh, we'll be listening to you on the radio on Sunday at 425 up there in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Thank you, guys. A lot of fun being on with you. Have Thanks, a great Merle. day. There he is, Merle Reese on the Tom's River Auto Group Sports Hotline.